Hi guys, welcome back to RAS Weekends and today we are taking a deep dive look at all the brand new units for the Anatolian factions and the AOR Anatolians for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. Check out my Thracian video I did on the Thracians and the interview that I've done with Mausolos on the histories of all these places and nations. And while you're at it, like and subscribe. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. So here we are guys, let's get into the video. And the Anatolians are very interesting because they cover a large swathe of land that has been dominated by large empires for a long time. So a lot of these units are AOR units rather than factions or emergent factions as well. But for each one I'll let you know which it is. And I can't wait to get my hands on some of these AOR units, I tell you. So let's start with the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans are quite an obscure people they are thought to have settled in anatolia from thrace of course that means they're related to the thracians however they have been heavily influenced by the greeks persians and phrygians who are also thought to have come from thrace as well and pergamon used the mycenaeans a lot and will be a staple of the pergamon army now of course i will put the locations of all these up on screen in screenshots so you'll see all the locations of where these aor places are on the map but let's start with the mycenaean javeliners the javelineers the javelineers and you can see the greek influence straight away can't you got the david beckham sweatband on as well some of these boys need to uh Need to get rid of that sweat from their eyes, of course, when they're firing their javelins. Can't aim properly when you've got sweat running into your eyes, can you, boys? Uh, but yeah, really cool looking units nonetheless. We've got the Starks and the Lannisters over here. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Very Greek looking unit because, of course, like we said, very influenced by the Greeks. These boys are javelin men and they are not the best. Javelin men, 12 defense, yes, a whole 12, uh, 3 morale, 6 melee attack, and 7 missile attack. Like I said on last video, guys, some of these stats may be changed, but they're about there at the minute, so uh, do bear that in mind, that some may be changed a little bit to release. We've also got the Mycenaean archers, here they are, and again, very Greek looking, very cool indeed, obviously around the area of Pergamon, so very West Anatolia, heavily influenced by the Greeks and that's why we see the Greek look and that's one thing you're going to see in this video guys is the huge variation in the look on these boys because of where they're from and where they can be recruited and the influences that were there as well so of course these guys not fantastic either three morale four melee attack and five missile attack with only 130 missile range and seven defense so not a great uh, archer unit uh, and yeah I think this guy knows it He's trying to pluck uh, nothing out of the thin air because he's gone totally mad in his own weakness, in his own uh, non-ability to kill many of the enemy. But yeah, <laughs> these guys cool nonetheless and going to be there for the Pergamon roster as well in that region. So let's move on to the Lydians. And the Lydians, it was very difficult for the mod team to find a huge amount on the old Lydians. Um, because, of course, in the time frame, it's really hard to find a lot of stuff uh, on these guys. They were a kingdom before the Persians conquered them, but at the time of the mod, their culture and way of life was completely disappearing. Sardis, their capital, was basically 100% Hellenistic at this time, dominated by the Seleucids. Only those in the country, hills and mountains clung to their old ways, and these units represent the mixed Lydian and Greek soldiers that the Seleucids and even Rome later on used as auxiliaries. So, let's talk first about the Lydian Acontisti, and of course we know the Acontisti are very Greek unit, very uh, Greek indeed, uh, seen across all the Greek uh, rosters, so we can see these boys over here looking very Greek as well. And the Lydian Acontisti, not a fantastic javelin unit like we said, 3 morale, 11 defense, uh, but of course 7 missile attack, which is always okay, always going to do a bit of damage, and you can get these guys in your army if you want to, and you can see uh, just by looking at them how... Uh, low down the pecking order they are in terms of units by looking at their design as well. And next to them, we have the Lydian Hippacontisti. So a Javi Cavi unit, nine missile attack with their seven 
Javis. 12 morale, which is okay, and 23 defense, which is not too bad. So pretty similar to a Prodromoy unit. But that 26 charge is nothing to sniff at, guys. It's not too bad indeed. Few of them sporting the Linothorax. They have 7 armor, so that's quite good for a cavalry unit. Uh, but again... Probably an early game javelin cavalry unit rather than a late game one unless you get it really experienced and upgraded. But yeah, cool looking unit again. But we can tell the sort of lower tier of these boys compared to some of those Thracian units we saw the other day. Just by looking at them and the lack of armor that they have and the lack of extra equipment that these boys have as well. But very cool. non the less. So let's move on to the Chrysaurian League, guys. The Carrions. And the Chrysaurian League is actually a faction and, of course, has these AOR units there for you to recruit as well. The Carrions were some of the first attested mercenaries recorded in history fighting for the Egyptians. They, of course, were heavily Hellenized, like literally everyone in this region, uh, but kept to their traditions of warfare. They were known for their axes and the drapanon, which is sort of a sickle sword. The Diadochi all used them, and Rhodes was overthrown by them with the help of Rome. Rome meddling where it shouldn't, as usual, <laughs> overthrowing Rhodes. But these guys are very cool and a lot more elite than some of the other units that we have recently seen and i wanted to just say big thank you to um a howl for putting together these historical notes for you guys and like i say if you want to see all the big history and the histories behind these regions and units check out that unit uh, that interview with mausolos that will come out uh with these videos so let's have a look the carrion light infantry they're wielding an axe, boys. They are wielding an axe. We've not seen many axe-wielding units in the game. We've seen a little pick, but we've not seen an axe. I love it. I really do love it. I love a unique weapon every now and then. Nice helms they've got on. Not a huge amount of armor, which is why they are light infantry, like we can see. And the big Thurios shields to protect them from missiles as well. But 24 defense, which is decent. 8 charge, not fantastic. Only 2 armor, which is very obvious to see as well. And 15 defense skill. 13 morale and 11 melee attack that is armor piercing. So like the Thracians, we see some more armor piercing boys among the Anatolians. Very nice to see. And next to them, there's something even nicer to see. The meanies, the mean boys of the carrions here they are the carrion heavy infantry and don't they look stunning yes they do fantastic i love the drapanon sword that they have very cool indeed 17 morale 35 defense and 12 melee attack now these guys aren't armor piercing but nevertheless 17 morale is very nice and 35 defense is decent. With a 12 melee attack with a sword, remember guys, always better than a spear. So they're going to have a bit of a bonus against spear-wielding troops. But they are a very cool looking unit nonetheless. And I would really love to recruit one or two of these guys just to stick them in there for thematics, for the look. Because they look stunning, don't they? Really nice looking unit. We can tell they're not fully elite because we've got no capage going on. Uh, but lots of uh, a bit of plumage going on as well. So really cool unit as well. Next, let's move on to another faction, the Lycian League. The Lycians or the Lycians, uh, they are a faction, of course, they have AOR as well. Now, uh, similar to the Carrions, the Lycians have their own style of warfare and also were used as mercenaries, especially by the Ptolemaic Kingdom. Also similar to the Carrions, the Koreans, not the Koreans, the Carrions, they had issues with Rhodes and appealed to Rome for independence, which they got. They have a lot of native equipment mixed with Hellenic equipment. So again, we see a change and it's just amazing the variation we get with these units and the will to be historically accurate throughout all these rosters that we've seen guys like i say as well we've got some anatolian rosters so check out the pontic roster in the description below but yeah the light Sian. so let's start uh, with the light Sian archers here they are and really cool i don't believe we've seen these sort of breastplates 
quite before. I don't think yet. Yeah, and that one as well. Really cool looking. Very unique. These sorts of uh, hats, the Thracian hats with the feathers in, not seen those either. So a very unique looking unit indeed. And these guys, four morale, three melee attack, five missile attack with 13 defense, seven of which is armor though. So they're going to do well against missiles, but they're not going to stand up to say a Neo Cretan archer. But a decent early game archer nonetheless. And they look great, don't they? They look really cool. So yeah. Bring them in just for the style points. Styling it out with those bronze breastplates, boys. Absolute style for the boys. Next to them, we've got the Lycian Hoplites. The boys, the big shielded boys. Really like these helms. Again, very cool indeed. Fantastic looking units. Unique shields once again, guys. Really cool. Unique color palettes. All that thing. A lot of yellows and blues uh, with these boys. And uh, yeah. They're an actual decent Hoplite unit. 32 defense, 14 morale, and 10 melee attack. So standard Hoplite, really. Mid-tier Hoplite, but cool nonetheless. Cool looking unit indeed. Next to them, we have the Lycian Marine. So we've got some Epibarti Anatolians with a Thracian or so barbarian, the Barbaroi sort of look with the, uh, the cowhide uh, cloaks. That is real style there, boys. That'd be uh, that'd be on the catwalk at a, a Gucci uh, <laughs> a Gucci showcase uh, at some some point, a Gucci fashion show. Um, but yeah, these boys these boys did it originally. Okay, these boys did it originally. And again, we see the really cool hats that they've got. Very nice indeed. Very historically accurate. And yeah, nice uh, nice bit of armor. On these boys for marines. And again you can see they're wielding the drapanon. These curved swords. Very scary looking swords indeed. So these guys the Lycian marines. Are a very 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 good marine unit boys. 14 morale. 10 melee attack with that sword. 13 missile attack with the javis. And 26 total defense. As that goes that is a very elite marine unit indeed. And I love them. They are heavy infantry though, so they're going to be a little bit slow, but apart from that, very cool. And again, kind of unique designs on these sort of armors that we've not seen at all before. So really cool to see that. Next to that, we have the Lycian Drepano Foroi, and these boys are wielding the Drepanon again and again. Uh, not a huge amount of armor. But they've got the big shields. They've got the helms. They don't need no else. They don't need nothing else. Armor is for pussies. That's what these guys say. <laughs> they just want a shield and a helmet. And that's all. But yeah. Uh, interesting unit. 13 morale. 10 melee attack. And 25 defense. Nine of which is against missiles. So okay against missiles. Uh, but 16 defense skill is good as well. And 13 morale. Always decent. Uh, 10 melee attack. Yeah, not fantastic, but it is swords, guys, again. Oh, yes! We didn't have Sheila Buff at all show up in last episode. And now we have him many times! Yes! Shia, come here, my friend. Yes! There you are. Glorious to see you once again, my friend. But anyway, these guys. Uh, yeah, decent unit. Mid-tier unit. Gonna be good early game because of the swords. But yeah, really cool variation once again. We've actually got some capage going on with these boys as well. Always love to see a bit of capage, don't we, boys? So let's move on to the Pamphylians. So the Pamphylians are located here on the map. And at the minute, they are a source of ongoing debate in the circles of the historians for the mod. It seems likely that they were equal parts Anatolian and Greek as both settled and intermingled there before 270 BC. These men represent the light infantry and heavy skirmishers that the area was known for. So we've got the Pamphylian heavy javelin men to represent this area. And we can see fully armored, nice Linothoraces going on. Helms as well. Nice designs on those boys. These tiny little details are, are what makes this mod really, aren't they? They look fantastic. Great looking units and some good designs on the shields as well. And these guys are similar to a Greek uh, Peltast in terms of their stats. 26 defense, 8 morale, 
8 melee attack and 9 missile attack. Like I say, some of these stats might be changed before release, but we don't fully know. They're, they're pretty much there, guys, so there's not going to be a huge amount of change. Missile attack of 9 is always good, so a decent javelin unit that's going to do you well throughout the game. They don't have any other stats in terms of being armor piercing or anything like that, but that's fine. They're a good javelin unit nonetheless. So let's move on to the Pisidians. And we have actually seen these guys before in a couple of rosters. I can't exactly remember exactly which one. Maybe Pontus. Um, but the Pisidians inhabit very rough and rugged terrain. And many held out as either independent city-states or mountain tribes. And you can see where they are. Now, guys, these units represent the hardiness of the area. The Seleucids, Ptolemies, and Pergamon all utilize them. Interestingly enough... Pisidians were actually settled in Bactria, most likely to quell unrest from these warrior people in Pisidia. Uh, so the Bactrians will at least get the Javelinman unit to recruit way out in the east, which is pretty cool to think. That history level of detail, fantastic as well. So we've got the Pisidian Javelinman here, guys. And again, looking quite Greek. I love these sort of helms with the horns and the ears on. Very cool, indeed. Really nice. Really, really nice. And Shear is back. Fantastic. I love to see Shear on the shields. Um, but yeah, 6 morale, 6 melee attack, 8 missile attack, and 13 defense. So pretty similar to, say, an Akontistai, a Uzonoi, um, early game units. Gonna throw some javies. Gonna do some damage. That's about it. But next to them, we have the Pisidian Theroperoi. And we can see, not very armored, the browns going through these guys a lot. Um, and yeah, interesting looking unit indeed. Cool looking unit. Very uniform in terms of their look. A lot of browns going on. And yeah, the Pisidian Theroperoi. Not a fantastic Theroperoi unit as we can see. 22 defense, 2 armor. 16 defense skill is fine. But 13 morale and 10 melee attack is also fine. And these guys are actually sword wielding Theroperoi though so even though they only have 10 melee attack that's going to be better than the uh, sort of 12 melee attack of a of a hoplite because it's a wielding a spear but yeah 10 missile attack though and they get six javis guys six javis not five six um it just doesn't count the uh the officers in in there so yeah Six Javis for these boys, so a bit different to your usual Theroperoi. More of sort of a Peltast unit, and it's got very similar stats to a Peltast, but better attack uh, in a lot of cases, and better morale in a lot of cases as well. So a good unit, and I would use it as a Peltast rather than an infantry unit if you're gonna use these boys. So, let's move on to the Selge. So here we have the Selge guys. They are a faction and AOR with the Selgian Slingers. They are located here with their two separate cities. Unfortunately, they were mistakenly shown in the first Greek AOR uh, video. But Selge were similar to the Pamphylians in that they were heavily mixed between Greek colonists, apparently from Sparta, and the native Pisidians. Selge was never conquered until Roman times, and it was known for its fertility. They will, of course, have access to the Pisidian and Pamphylian units as well because they're very close to this region. But again, <laughs> the Selgian Slingers, pretty much the low of the low, these boys, the low of the low. All they have is their bum bag, their toga, and their whip, otherwise known as their sling. Sounds like me on a Saturday night. But yes, these guys really, really... Uh, the lowest of the low, really. Three morale, four melee attack, and five missile attack, which is actually decent for a slinger unit, and nine total defense. Not a, not a fantastic unit, but an interesting unit nonetheless, especially the history of this region indeed. So let's move on to Kotenna, guys, as you can see where it is here. Very uh, close to the Selge. Uh, and these guys are another Anatolian tribe. And you can only recruit these Atenian Hoplites in Kotenna itself. Similar to Selge and the others, they were heavily Hellenized and mixed. But Kotenna or Atenna was an independent Pisidian city-state. 
They provided troops to the Seleucids in war, and thus the unit was born. These units, although they're called hoplites, they fight with axes. Yes, more axes, guys, instead. And they have a nice hybrid Pisidian and Greek look. This is one of Mosca's favorite units, one of the modders in the game. And I've got to agree, they are a fantastic looking unit, aren't they? Really nice indeed. I just love the look of the axes. Similar to the Thinoid Clubman we saw with the Thracians. These boys are a fantastic look. A really, really cool unit. I love the axes and the helms. Really nice. And I love the battle axe on the shield. Just to rub it into the faces of the enemy. That <laughs> They are axe-wielding troops. And these guys, really cool stats. Armor-piercing weapon with that axe. 29 defense, which is decent. Better than the Thracians. A lot of the Thracian units for armor-piercing units as well. With 14 morale, which is actually really good. And of course, like I say, effective against armor. That's always very strong in Total War. I love actually their, uh, their boots and shoes down here, or their greaves. Very cool indeed. We've not seen that design before. Or maybe I've just not picked up on it, but I've definitely not noted that before. Really cool looking unit. I love them. Really nice indeed. So on to the Phrygians, guys. And this is where it's located. It covers a wide area. And it was even wider before the Galatians invaded. The Phrygians are thought to have originated in Thrace and settled in Anatolia a long time before the mod starts. They used to have their own kingdom that the Lydians then conquered. Since then, they have never been independent but have always served as auxiliaries in many armies. The Lysiad faction, a bit of a sneak peek, guys, appears in the heart of Phrygia and will get these units. They are not well attested, though, with one Roman general sending them home for being not so great in the fight, I'm assuming. <laughs> but they have the Phrygian javelin men, and we can see really cool design, very unique looking units as we can see kind of the mix of the anatolian three and thracian that we've seen they look very comfy i'm not gonna lie <laughs> very comfy indeed a few wearing helms and really cool designs we've not seen any of these sorts of designs before really nice looking units and i love the shields i love those patterns these sort of thracian and anatolian patterns that we see on the shields here um but yeah the Phrygian Javelin Men, three morale, so that Roman general must have been right. Six melee attack, seven missile attack, and 14 defense. So again, a very low tier Javelin unit and should be used as meat shields. <laughs> let's move on to the Phrygian Spearmen. And again, really cool, unique new designs that we've not seen before on some of these robes. Again, looking very comfy indeed nice helms do really pop those golden helms there don't they with the rest of the color scheme really cool indeed and yeah i'm assuming these guys again not the best unit 12 morale is not too bad but nine melee attack for a spear unit fortunately is not very strong they do have some large spears though 23 uh, defense of which all is defense skill so these guys are going to be actually quite good against the armor-piercing units of the Anatolians around you and the armor-piercing units of Thrace as well, but not much good against anything else. <laughs> Especially missiles. Keep these guys out of the way of missiles. Then we have the Phrygian Cavalry. And again, really cool-looking designs. Very unique. Again, this guy's like, damn, I look dope. Um, <laughs> oh, God, that was horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That was so cringy. How could I... How could I be so cringy? Jesus Christ. But anyway... <laughs> but anyway... Cool-looking shields on these guys. Really cool. And you can sort of see the sort of wicker... Um, the wicker style. You can see the wicker texture of those. The wooden texture on them. Which is really nice. A fantastic detail. As always, we do love our little details here, don't we, boys? We love the little details. But these guys, let's have a look. 17 defense, 28 charge is really good. 12 morale and 8 melee attack. So again, just low attack for the Phrygians. Not a huge amount of defense either, but a decent charge. So if you get these guys, very similar to the Thracian Light Lancers, charge them into the enemy. This guy is 
yeah, I don't know. He's he's already been hit by an arrow before he's even started. Uh, but yeah, not a huge attack for the Phrygians, but really unique and really cool. None the less. So let's move on to Paphlagonia. So Paphlagonia is lo located here, guys, and it is a faction and, of course, has this AOR as well. And the first unit is the Paphlagonian Javelin Men. Again, the cool designs on the robes and the shields. Really nice indeed. These guys, again, very similar to some of the other Javelin Men we've seen today. Not fantastic. Three morale, six melee attack, seven missile attack, and 14 defense. These guys actually have zero armor, boys. And only five shield, so going to be very weak to missiles. So use them as a meat shield, or use them to pepper the enemy and try avoid missiles themselves, because they're going to fall like flies when missiles hit them. But next to them, we do have the Paphlagonian cavalry over here, and again that nice Anatolian uh, design on these boys. I, oh, again, I love the patterns. I love the patterns on the robes. They are so unique, aren't they? And this mod just does such a good job of showing you all these unique cultures visually as well as in the gameplay and the game. I just love it. It's really cool. Really cool. But these boys, again, 29 charge is fantastic for a uh, Javi cavalry unit. 9 missile attack, 8 melee attack, and 12 morale with 16 defense. These guys are going to die to missiles nearly as quickly as the javelin men. But yeah, they're going to do well on the charge. And that, that Javi Cav, if you like Javi Cav, this is a decent early game uh, Javi Cav unit. So do use them if you get access to them early game. I think they'll be okay. I personally, like everyone knows, I don't like Javi Cav. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to use them. But yeah, if you like Javi Cav, really cool unit indeed. Uh, and on to the Mass Dianian if I'm saying it right, infantry, was first, of course, we had, at first, of course, we had the Mandinians, then we had the Mariandinians, and finally, we have the Mastidianians. <laughs> it, of course, was a Jorolafian and Mausolossian nightmare. If you don't know, they are the historians, two of the historians working on the mod. This unit was recorded as serving Pergamon as mercenaries and hailed from Paphlagonia. Thus, they will be factional for the Paphlagonians and also a merc for some of the boys. And these guys, they're looking dirty, man. They're looking dirty. They look like they've been through the ringer a little bit. So let's have a look at their stats. Um, but here they are. 14 morale, 10 melee attacks, decent. 10 missile attack with 7 javis and 31 defense, 21 of which is defense skill and 10 defense against missiles. Not a bad unit at all. It says they're spearmen, but again, these are similar to the Theropori we saw before. I would use them as peltasts, try leave them out of melee for as long as possible, get their javis off, then get them in melee. That's definitely the option you want to use for these boys. Uh, and yeah, you can see the Greek influences around Pergamon once again for these boys. So let's move on to the Lyconians and Isaurians, and they are located here, guys. Unfortunately, there's not that many Lyconians in the game. Ahal did try in vain, but the historians found absolutely nothing that really tied the Lyconians into this time period in terms of military, and the area was a, even more of a backwater than Paphlagonia at the time. It was very arid, and there wasn't much going on apart from the tribes. Thus, there will be either no AOR or the Phrygians will be used. Lyconia is more known biblically uh, than anything else as the Apostle Paul uh, ministered to many towns in the region. But we do have some Isaurians. The Isaurians were a wild hill people that caused problems all the way up until the Byzantine Empire and were never easily conquered, if ever. They were used as mercenaries throughout history, and these guys, of course, represent that. Very similar to uh, the uh, the hill tribes of the Vale of Arin, I've got to say, these guys. Living up in the hills, the areas down in the valleys where the farms and the cities are were conquered, but the hill tribes, they will never give in. And these guys are ready to fight, as we can see, all getting ready to go for the enemy. Got a really cool sword. And again, very unique designs. These large circular shields 
uh, that are kind of the uh, the wicker and the sort of wooden, uh, as you can see, the wooden design on these boys. And again, more unique designs on the robes, very unique uh, to the region and those curved swords as well. These guys are actually quite decent as a light infantry unit. And again, six, uh, six missiles with 10 missile attack, 22 defense, 13 morale and 10 melee attack. So a cool unit that again, I would use as a Peltast unit, even though it says light infantry, use them to fire their javis into the enemy and then get stuck in. So we move on to the final three units, guys. And I think you're going to be impressed and enjoy the final three. I've got to say. So, let's move on to the Silesians and the Silesian Pirates, guys. Yes, coming from the vanilla game as well, you get access to similar or, you know, named units that are named very similar. And these guys are an emergent faction in this area of Silesia and, of course, AOR as well. The Silesians were a mixed culture of Anatolians with heavy Assyrian and Aramean influence. They had their own kingdom in the Bronze Age, but ever since have been ruled by foreigners. The Seleucids and Ptolemies made Ptolemies? The Ptolemies made use of them as auxiliaries, and then much later they were known to be the home of pirates along the coast that helped bigger nations in their wars. Mithridates used them, they betrayed Spartacus, and Pompey finally crushed them. So a very, you know, influential area. Um, for such a small area in the midst of massive empires. Really cool indeed. So we have the Silesian Spearman. And again, very unique looking. I love the just different designs for each of these Anatolian areas. Again, I love this, um, this belt and these clasps. We've not really seen many of those before, have we? And these uh, sort of hide-covered shields for these boys. The Silesian Spearman. And actually... They're quite a decent unit. 28 defense for what they look like. They don't look decent, do they, in terms of... They don't look like they'll be a good unit. They look like they'll be a levy unit. But yeah, 28 defense, 13 morale. 10 melee attack with spears again is not fantastic. But again, 6 javis with 10 missile attack. So these guys love a javi fight. They love a skirmish. So really, when we see the Anatolian roster, unlike the Thracians that was shock heavy infantry and getting in close roster this is more of a skirmish and runaway roster <laughs> i've got to say uh, in terms of the anatolians a lot more skirmishes a lot of hill tribes that would use skirmish tactics so really cool to see those guys guys those guys um <laughs> represented in the mod yeah really cool 28 defense is actually quite good with a lot of defense skill so again another spearman unit that might do well holding off uh, an armor piercing unit until you can get your cavalry in to charge them in the back but let's have a look at the ones we've all been waiting for the silesian pirates boys here they are and don't they look fantastic and ready to go with the curved swords very scary and the big shields as well and uh yes piratey boys piratey boys in the game here they are so they're pretty much similar to an Epibate, a Marines unit, with that six javis. But 10 melee attack, again, with a sword, so it's going to be better than a spear. 13 morale and 22 defense. Cool unit, and everyone loves a good Silesian pirate, especially people who played a lot of vanilla. And awesome to see them represented here in the game. So let's move on to our final, final unit, guys. And it is actually an additional unit for the roster of Pontus. Like I said, you can check out that full roster down below in the description. And these guys are Galato-Pontic Epibartai. So they are a mixed Galatian and Anatolian unit that served for Pontus as Marines. It's a slinger unit, it's an Epibartai, and it's Celtic. And I don't think we've ever seen that before. It's very unique. For Pontus only, and maybe the Galatians as well. This unit, like the Galato-Thracian warband we saw, will be given more variants when they do work on the Celts. Honestly, so unique. We have never seen anything like this before, guys. And that's again why we saved the best till last. Such a unique unit. 
They're all standing like pencils at attention um, because they know I and Mr. Cherry are watching, apart from this guy who is going to get a reprimand. Uh, but yeah, really cool helms. Again, we've gone to Celtic helms. We have not seen these helms, this style of helm before. Celtic style helms. And they have a Thurios shield, but it's not curved. And it's got Celtic designs on, guys. How unique. We have just been seeing lots of Greek designs and Eastern designs and Thracian and uh, Anatolian designs on the Thurias shield. We have not yet seen a Celtic design. So let's have a look at some of their stats. Three morale, which, you know, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't say is fantastic. But yeah, 10 melee attack, which is actually really good, but they're going to break as soon as the enemy sniffs them. Uh, four missile attack, which is not fantastic, but a lot of missiles and 15 defense as well. This guy's seen some shit, hasn't he? Uh, and, I mean, that's probably why they're all running. They've all seen too much shit, and that's why they have three morale. <laughs> but, yeah, 15 defense, and just so unique. Like, it doesn't matter about the stats. Like, these guys, so cool. And I just love the depth of history that has gone into all these units once again. It is absolutely glorious, isn't it, boys? It is fantastic. And that brings us to the end, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed. Comment down below your favorite unit. I think I've got to agree with Mosca that my favorite is the Atenian Hoplites over here. Although I do like the Carrion Heavy Infantry as well. Really cool looking unit. Really strong um, unit as well. Really cool. So comment your favorite unit down below, guys. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.